Uh, so, we haven't made a comment about starting an episode with so in a long time, even though we do that. Yeah, that's true. We do it often. We do it very often. I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> uh, just, just, <laughs> yeah. Going into the buy. I like turtles. Going, <laughs> going into the buy. There are a few things that you want to get off your chest, and a few things that maybe the Bills should work on from a fan's perspective. Paul? Yep. Where can I find hashtag sports content? Yep. <laughs> Before we get started, I do want to point out Legends and Stars at Batavia Downs, legendsandstars.net if you're looking for something to do. Uh, they are uh, massive bills, uh, are going to be there Friday and Saturday, October 25th and 26th. Okay. Um, we are going to be there as well. Tons of guys are going to be there. Lots of current Buffalo Bills, lots of former Buffalo Bills um, are all scheduled to be there. So we are going to be there uh, walking around. So come hang out with us. Come come get some autographs. I can't wait. Oh, I can't so wait. Can you believe Ricky Williams got rescheduled due to a quote unquote personal unforeseen circumstances? Does this surprise you? Does this surprise you guys? Not me. Lenny Kravitz must be on tour. So, so Paul, I'm, I'm just curious about this. During the bye week, mm -hmm. we talk about the offense, the defense, and, and the, uh, the front office. Right. What's one thing you'd like to see all three of them do prior to playing against the Miami Dolphins? Can, can I start with one? Yes. You got seven wide receivers on this roster right now. Is that really? You weird? don't need seven wide receivers on this roster. You, you threw the ball 32 times against the Titans. Do you think? You do not need seven wide receivers on this roster. I mean, Zay's roster spot, in my opinion, is up for grabs right now. After a while, controllable contracts only mean so much if you can't produce. Yeah. He I mean, didn't catch a ball, did he? No, I don't think so. So, uh, Beasley, Brown, Roberts, uh, Foster. Foster. I got the last two more. more. was uh, McKenzie and Duke Williams. Not hateful. So, given the fact that you had made a comment about Duke Williams picking this offense up pretty darn quick. Yep. Um, even though he was practicing with the team, he knows a lot sure. of the, the concepts. Now he just came in. Would the bye week be a perfect week to bring in a new wideout to learn your offense for two weeks before you start to play the junior varsity Miami Dolphins? So you're saying acquiring another wide receiver? If that wide receiver has more of an impact than Zay Jones at this point, yeah, I don't mind it. But what does that do with Zay Jones? I mean, at this point, you could still wave Zay Jones. Like you could. You could, still, you could still wave him. And I what think, are you losing? I, I mean, think they would want to get something for him. So if you're really going to have somebody active, Robert Foster carries more value than Zay Jones. There were seven teams coming into this weekend that had trouble at the wide receiver position. Plus you're going to have him on a on deal for two more years. Mm -hmm. He could be a piece that you use, uh, not well, the rest of this year and next year before you yep. gotta sign him. So I think he holds a little bit more value than because of all the injuries that are going on. You got right. Green Bay, you got Dallas, you got uh, Oakland, mm -hmm. you got a bunch of teams now that have wide receiver issues. I mean, would you resign Zay at this point? No, I wouldn't. If you're not yeah. going to resign him, then trying to trade him would probably make more sense. If you get yeah. a sixth round for him, mm -hmm. then you really have a fifth round because you know how they always flip picks sure. and everything. So uh, because there's no way. You're cutting Duke Williams. He will not clear waivers. No. Well, Fuller, Oakland, Fuller hasn't played a full season ever. Tyrell Williams didn't play. Yeah. So you have all these wide receiver problems going on all over the NFL. It seems that if you cut Duke Williams, big body guy, he's he's look he's hungry. Like you can yeah. see how hungry that guy is when he yeah. plays. You're gonna lose him. If you cut Zay Jones, he doesn't have practice squad eligibility. I don't believe. Uh, he's in his third year. Oh, he does still have practice. He does. Him. So let me explain that a little bit, right? Oh, so you like can it. carry a player with up to three years of eligibility, but here's the rule, okay? Mm -hmm. And the Bills, any player that would have had three years of eligibility, they would have lost on their practice squad their eligibility with what they did this week. So you're only ever allowed to have 
uh, a player with three years of, of NFL eligibility, right, mm -hmm. on your practice squad if and only if you maintain 53 players on your active roster at all times. The Bills didn't do that this week because oh. they, they caught McDermott and, and they then they didn't a day fill go it. By. Yeah, they let a day go by. Oh. Right. But you could do it now. So if you wave Zay Jones, nobody picks him up. You can place him on the practice squad, but you can never not have, you always have to have a corresponding move. Otherwise, that player is therefore automatically called up back to the roster. Okay. All right. Okay. So you have to have, it has to be a full roster of 53 at all times. for you to put somebody on your practice squad. Otherwise, you move one of those guys up if you cut them. Right. It has and to it's be your option. all corresponding moves. Gotcha. So, like, just as an example, right? If you if they put Tyler Croft on the IR, right, mm -hmm. in a corresponding move, they either have to bring somebody up from the practice squad or sign a free agent. They no. can't put them on the they can't put them on IR until they have a corresponding move to do at the same time. Oh, very interesting. My, my very first one is you need to figure out what you're doing with that extra wide receiver on your So roster. the offense, okay. Yeah, you need to figure out what you're doing with that extra wide receiver on the offense. You do not need seven wide receivers on this team. Well, they, that is just a fact. Well, they, what do you think? The, the How many did they have active today? Six? Six because Foster was inactive. Okay. So you have you have Roberts as your return guy. Mm -hmm. You have McKenzie as your gadget guy. Right. Brown and Beasley are, are cemented in there. Yep. Uh, you, had Z you had Zay Jones. Yep. And Duke. Yeah. Okay. So there's your sex. So when Foster is healthy. And I have to imagine the buy heel clear back to being able to play, absolutely. which makes Zay expendable. Expendable. Or to trade. Can... I'm just saying, strictly on a, on a contract basis, if you waive Robert Foster, he was a UDFA. You you really have, depending on how this collective bargaining agreement at the end of 2020 comes again, right. you have like four years with him at a controllable deal. Yeah, you Zay have another, Jones, you only you have, have this year and next year. Yeah, you have another two years with him exactly. at league minimum. Yeah, I, And Zay Jones is not league minimum. And he so seems like to be a better contract. player. Yeah, I know. Not blocker. No. However, right. we know I where agree. he went. I agree. We know I where agree. he went. You got to be a blocker in that system too. Sure do. So... Sure do. Roll Tide. So that's me. Oh, stop it. Uh, so, all right, so what's yours, number one? Number one thing on the offense that I want them, um, <clears throat> injuries. I want these guys to get healthy. I want, I don't want, okay. I don't want to, you want to take as many mental reps as you want, go right ahead. You want to re review the game film as many times as you want, go ahead. You want to try different guys at different positions to account for maybe injuries that happen, mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. You, you, I, I know in the way the NFL, they're not clanging and banging that, that week no. with each other. I understand that. But you probably want to find, if they're going to find a guy to sign to either their practice squad or a guy they want to sign to the 53, that they, they think they kept their eye on and they think it's going to be a depth guy, for the wide receiver that you may lose, one of the seven, Yeah. You get him in as quick as possible for those two weeks. Right. So you're saying Monday's a big day for Buffalo. Yes, like that. I think it would okay. be because I, you know, when this when this airs, it probably already happened. But yeah. I mean, yeah, we're talking about this, and uh, I'll put the date on this. But I mean, when we're talking about this, I think you got to make a move because you've been riddled with injuries on that offense. And while the defense could have injuries and still come back because they have that system has been in place, everyone knows their their responsibilities yeah. and everything. I think it's got to be the... Uh... I agree that the defensive players are much more replaceable than the offensive players because on offense, I don't think you've found Well, because the guys have been there, too. Yet. A lot right. of the guys yeah, have been there. Yeah, it's a whole new offense. So this one's going to be... This one's a little outside the box, right? You need to find a new punter. Ooh. You need to find a new punter. That you that, just have to do it. That's management? You can put that yeah, on Yeah, it is. You gotta, yeah, you got to find... You got to... You got to... It's a perfect time to start finding somebody for that job because I don't know what the front office thinks uh, we're doing at that position but I just don't I'm not buying it I'm just I can't buy it yeah that that, that really ham hampers your team if you're going to be a defensive squad yep. and you want to play the field position battle with some of these teams that are really tough you need to have someone that could swing the field for you yep. and it doesn't seem like he could swing the field sometimes he does but it's too inconsistent mm -hmm. for the games that end up being really horrible weather. Yep. And I, one I thing like you it. saw Tennessee do is they did a really good job of flipping field position. They did. With they did their with well. the punt game. You know, they did a very good job with that. So, I, it's just what you have right here isn't good enough. So, now is the perfect time to to revisit that. And if you're going to get rid of uh, a wide receiver here sooner or later, you're going to have a roster spot. 
just saying. I like it. What about you, Mark? So you, you so I, you you have did, offense and front office. Yeah. I did the offense. Um, defensively, what would I change on the defensive side of the ball? <laughs> it's like this is a very tough question mm -hmm. because what would you change on the defensive side of the ball? No massive injuries besides Harrison Phillips, which was already a position that was backed up. Because you had Petco. Because you had Petco, and you had Jordan Phillips, who played out of his mind against Tennessee. It's tough, isn't it? To me, and, and I don't mean to lead you into this, right? Yeah. I'm always worried about Milano or Edmonds getting banged up, and what can we do to fix that, right? That's always my concern. Yes. And, and what, Maurice Alexander and Corey Thompson are your solution to that? I don't, well, I don't, Corey Thompson has been hurt. I'm buying and that. then they, they <laughs> I almost said hockey term, healthy scratch. Right. If I were to do something on the defensive side of the ball that would I would concentrate on during the bye week, I think, God damn, I just had it in my head twice. Oh, if there was something during the bye week that I could change, that I could do focus on for the defense for the Buffalo Bills, it would be either to sign Lawson or extend Murphy. Mm -hmm. I would do that now. Yeah. Why not? The guy has showed okay. you through five games, both of them, um, what they got. Is Murphy on his last, last Murphy's year? Murphy's got one more year. He's got one more year. You can extend Lawson for two. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, he's on his franchise tag. You can't talk to him, can you? Well, not, no, he's on his fifth year. Fifth year. Can you talk to him on the fifth year? Sure. Not the franchise. Thing. Okay, yeah, I got that sure right. Can. All right, so you could talk to him. Maybe you can extend him two for two for 14 or something like that. You That's, think? I mean, market value for him is probably going to be around that for how he's playing. But remember, Lawson's only been playing 30-some percent of exactly. snaps. Exactly, exactly. So, well, I mean, they gave that deal to Latule, who I think is a beast. You know that. For what he brings to that defense. But we've seen Jordan Phillips step in. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, it makes Star even more valuable now that, that, that uh, Harrison Phillips is out, but that notwithstanding. Yeah. I think one of those things has to happen during that because it, it'll be just enough time for it to die down that it's not talked during for a, for a week of game. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you do it like a, a, set, a Saturday or Sunday before a game or after a game, and then you have to ha have that news all week, hey, they, they extended them. If you do it now during the bye, it starts to die yeah. down. Uh, so the guy could focus on football. Then. Yeah, Shaq has been super effective when he's he on the field. When he, he those thirty percent of snaps, I don't know if it's just situationally they're guessing right what they want to do with him. They just putting him in the right spots. He is hungry, but man. He and Jordan Phillips on that defensive line were just playing angry. I am just, I'm so, I'm so, uh, I'm so impressed with the when they platoon that first and second line. That yeah, second line seamless. doesn't seem like it's a far drop. No. No, it's dangerous. That's what makes this team so dangerous is that there's outside of Trey Wallace, uh, Edmonds, and Milano, if any one of those guys, even if you lose Hyde or Poyer, as long as you have one and Coleman, uh, and that's fine. Coleman, yeah. That's, I, I, don't, I don't think you would be hurt as badly as losing Hyde or Poyer isn't going to hurt your defense as much as losing Milano or Edmonds. I mean, that's just... Well, in my opinion, I'm just just to throw it out there. Wallace, Hyde, Poyer, Milano, and Edmonds, I believe, have all played 100 percent. Yeah, okay, they sure have. So if you lose, I, I like to disagree with you on that because we always talk about Hyde and Poyer being a tandem. Yeah, and I understand if it happens during a game where you're like, mm, okay, all right, all right, we got to we got to try to do some patchwork real quick. Mm -hmm. I think if you're playing one of those better teams and they go down, I think it's tougher. I think it's a lot tougher because I don't want to lose any of those five. Right. If you lose any of those five, you're in trouble. Okay. So what would be your defensive adjustment? Um, I, I, I'm still scared that linebacker depth scares the hell out of me. That's a great point, though. That linebacker depth scares the hell out of me. I mean, that's what that's what I'm most concerned with is the linebacker depth. You, no look, at, you look at Zoe there. He's just playing everywhere. Oh, my God. He's so valuable, man. And you're not going to find somebody like him. You're really not. I don't know if this is his last year. He's been so effective. I know. The guy's... <laughs> he just doesn't age. He and Frank Gore together are like 72 years old. But well, we talked about how... <laughs> we talked about how when Kyle Williams left, who was going to step up and emerge as leaders, and we weren't yeah, disappointed. No. What would I do in the front office? Well, I guess my defensive thing and the front office was kind of... The same yeah, they kind of... They kind of yeah, went one-on-one. Yeah, they kind of go together. Uh, yours, yeah, your last one was the defense, which you did. Um, so, it's, so Nation, we'll throw it to you guys. What are some things you want to see the front office do, the offense and the defense, and improve on or change or, uh, I mean, throw us a wrinkle.